Welcome back to Investment 360. The financial services sector is emerging from the worst financial crisis in 80 years. Tighter regulation and overhang of debt in the West and the immense growth in the power of banks in emerging economies will transform the landscape of banking. Of course, we're not out of that crisis yet. We may be going into another one. But what opportunities and threats are created uh, in this environment? What are the main lessons that banks will learn from the crisis? And what value is there to top it off in the US uh, in technology stocks after that uh, global financial crisis. So we have Koki Koeman and Do Stenekam from Sunlum Investment Management Global. They join us in the studio to share their insights. And of course, Chris Hart is still with me as well. Koki, let's kick off with you. Um, you know, banks should be trusted, they should be stable, they should be reliable, and they've come in for such yeah. a bad press recently. Yeah. Uh, the Barclays issue, the, the banks that have lent too much money to people they shouldn't have lent it to, big reputation issue yeah. here. Uh, it's, it's it's, there are a lot of bankers who have shot the banking industry in the foot. Uh, but I think the point needs to be made that, you know, all bankers are now being uh, shorn with the same, uh, on the same basis. And, and even in Barclays, I mean, that trading room is a very isolated unit uh, if you look at the total uh, number of employees that Barclays has. So, but I think the bottom line, what has gone wrong, specifically on the investment banking side, is the incentives were just way out of line because the guys, the profit pools they play with are just so big that uh, you know if you just make a marginal difference, the multiplier is huge. And so I think what Bob Diamond specifically and a lot of other heads of investment bankers missed is that the culture went wrong. Yeah. You know, it, it, it just became uh, very profit driven uh, for certain individuals and uh, and the rest of the banking industry is suffering. Uh, unfortunately, you've got this whole problem that you had in the US with the subprime, but then the same ha thing happened in, in Ireland. So, you know, generally banking has, has not got a good name. But, you, you know, we've, we've invested in, in lots of banks, even if you just think in the US. US Bancor is one of the banks that, that Warren Buffett is heavily invested in, has not put a foot wrong. Mm. You know, so, for investors, you've got to look at the cultural, mm. the cultural, and the, the DNA of management. And what are they being rewarded for? I recall yeah. in the mid 2000s on the retail side, uh, asking one of the, the the branch managers in one of our banks, saying, "What are you guys rewarded for?" He said, "We used to be rewarded for managing risk. Yeah. In other words, if you had too many bad loans issued, you were in trouble. Now we're rewarded for gaining market share. Yeah. That was the shift. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, but our regulators, I think, we kept yeah. a we, check we on we that. We actually, I believe, uh, have got a very good show here. I, th yeah. I, I think th that's correct. I also think. Bankers are getting a bad press because it's an easy label to actually mm. d and deflect mm. the actual culpability from the political side mm. and also central bank side that you're getting from Bank of England and Federal Reserve. There's yeah. a huge amount of culpability in terms of market manipulation and t from politicians, from central bank. Okay, you're nodding a lot yeah. there. Uh, he's totally right. I mean, the Bank of England. Well, the subsequent uh, investigations will, will reveal, I'm sure, that, that they were aware of what was happening. And, and certainly the Fed mm. in the US, Barclays were warning them. And, mm. they, and they were telling the Bank of England, you guys have got to look at what's happening. And they didn't. Mm. So you're yeah. totally right. And by the well. way, on the whole housing scandal as well in the US, the politicians benefited and, and closed their eyes. And in fact, pushed uh, Fannie Mae and exactly Fannie exactly Freddie Mac exactly. to, to lend they more than they should have. Yep. And yep. This, is why th this is why one needs to have a more balanced approach. It's yeah. so easy to stick evil greedy banker and yeah. uh, please vote for me yeah. even though I'm a sc scoundrel in my yeah. own right. But and let's look <laughs> at, the, at the bank. If you think what a bank's got to do, I mean yeah. banks have to do things that other companies don't. Yeah. They all expect it now to return, uh, make a return for investors, but yeah. they have to do other things which Anglo-American or uh, Marion Roberts yeah. doesn't have to do. They've got to provide capital for the right. economy, they've got to right. lend, yeah. and they've got to take deposits yeah. and look after yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. It's now time, people are saying, to split these functions up. Yeah. Now, specifically, look, it was actually Clinton in the U.S. who brought, who re uh, repealed the, the Glass-Steagall Act and, and allowed uh, investment banks and normal commercial banks to merge again. And, and that opened the whole Pandora's box in the sense that you allowed the guys who, who trade to do that at the risk of depositors and eventually the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe that should be reversed. I agree with Paul Falker. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that you should mention my name with the same. No, I'll uh, tell him you said but so. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, no. you know, and, and, and who fights it? Who's against it? Obviously Barclays and all the big investment banks. Mm. So whether that's necessary in South Africa, because in, in South Africa the investment banking portion 
was never been big enough to really swing and the markets that play are not big enough to have such an impact. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting to see if it does get push through in the UK and I think it, it will most probably and uh, you know in the US it's, it's more question because the investment bankers are big financiers of presidential campaigns so whether yeah. that happens again but you know I think it should and if it does whether it happens in South Africa that's another question but yeah. if it was Investec would be the one you know it's the biggest yeah. investment banking is so it would be the least that would, the least change would have to happen yeah. to Investec perhaps. No, the, the most the they, most they would be split yeah. Yeah. But the main, the, the main thing is that there's the sector's tainted. And I think there's still enormous systemic risk still embedded in the system, and especially in Europe, where yeah. you've got a potential for a cascading problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, in other words, a full-scale failure of the banking yeah. system is yeah. Yeah. possible in Europe. Yeah. And this is where, where one says, where do you find these uh, the, the opportunities? Yeah. Because in well, let's talk investment yeah. now, in yeah. investing in banks. Yeah. And uh, the point has been made about our banks that we escaped the worst, yeah. partly because of Errol yeah. Kruger warning yeah. them and the National Credit Act and various yeah. other things. Yeah. Uh, how will, if the fashion for breaking up the banks comes here, yeah. what will happen to our sector? You mentioned investing. Not much, I think, because, uh, you know, as I said, because the investment banking portion is fairly small, so it won't have that much of an effect. If you just go African Bank, Capitec not affected at all. Uh, Standard Bank in Africa is dominant. So uh, I think internationally, I mean, Chris's point there is important in that I would disagree with you on one word. You said especially. I would say mostly Europe because yes. the US banking system has largely been recapitalized mm -hmm. uh, the bad debts have been provided for the reserves to bad loans are almost two times mm. uh, whereas in Europe you've still got a big problem yeah. big sovereign exposure yeah. but in terms of what we ourselves have been doing uh, you know most of our investments over the last f uh, three years uh, has been more in emerging market banks like the South African banks that were always well capitalized didn't have you know, a more uh, over lending problem mm -hmm. and kept generating fairly high returns and didn't sell on rubbish bonds uh, to someone oh, else correct. to look after Dale, let's bring you in here and let's mm -hmm. talk about those uh, tech stocks in America last week we heard about Microsoft and Google and Microsoft their first loss quarterly in 26 years since lifting uh, Apple's come out now uh, the significance of this for us um, <coughs> I'm not too sure what the significance is of the results in the short term. Obviously, uh, in the US, they tend to focus a lot on quarterly results. Um, and you know, I think one should try not to read too much into what happens from one three-month period to the next, mm -hmm. especially since uh, the product life cycle seems to have become quite short. And that, that seems to have quite an effect um, on those quarterly numbers. But just looking at, at the tech sector overall, we we dis discern quite a lot of value in that sector um, and for myself being someone who's actually sort of had one eye on that sector long enough to remember the dot-com bubble yeah. um, it's very interesting now to see the kind of multiples one can buy some of these now very well established mm. companies on mm. uh, and compare that to to the multiples that we, we saw sort of 12 years ago. Chris, yeah. what interest is there from investors yeah. in, in, in American stocks like that? We can't buy them here on our exchange. Mm -hmm. But I think there is interest, uh, mm -hmm. and, and this, is, this is the point. There's iconic names, as yeah. we've mentioned Everyone's two got already. them in their house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, and the point is, is that, th that you're making is that this sector has become value, mm -hmm. all right? And there's genuine value in the sector, Plus, there's growth on top of it. It's still fraught with all sorts of things that you can have. Uh, how can I say, fallen angels? Where Rim is one of those mm. those companies where, uh, if if you're not making it, if if you stumble a single quarter, if you, you can, yeah. it's a long, long, and long way back. And if you fall back. off on the edge of the cliff, they stamp on your fingers and you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you do have that, yeah. but it's one of the big investment themes going through the global economy at the moment. So, looking that at, the, at the, those companies that yes. you mentioned? Well, <coughs> I mean, the best example is probably Microsoft, which is the biggest single holding in our portfolio. Um, here is a company which has been very well established. They, they've been around since the late 70s. Um, they, in the enterprise space, so that's where businesses spend money on computers, they have market share globally upwards of 75%. Yep. Um, and that is a very unique position in any global mm. company to have. Mm. And you can buy this company on a single digit multiple. Mm. Yeah. Why can you buy it on a single digit multiple? Oh, by the way, also they're sitting on $38 billion of cash. 
Yeah. yeah, so this is not a bank with sovereign <laughs> exposure to <laughs> Europe. Yeah. Yeah, so the balance sheet is very solid. Yeah. Yeah. I think the reason the markets sort of become uh, or, or has accorded at such a low multiple is perhaps because there are sexier alternatives mm. out there. Mm. Um, also because there's a perception that they've missed the boat mm -hmm. in terms of a, a lot of the, the, the kind of products that people are spending money on are telephones um, and tablets. But uh, we've been following quite closely the progress that they're making in development of the new operating system, which will be launched later in this year. We'll have to stop there, Doe. It's a fascinating discussion on banks and tech stocks, but we have run out of time. That was uh, Kaki Koeman and Doe Stenekamp, both from uh, Sunlum Investment Management Global. And that's it for Investment 360 this evening. Thanks, too, to my guest host, Chris Hart, who's Chief Strategist at Investment Solutions. After the break, stay tuned for Hot Stocks, and good night.